So guys, what would happen if we had a non-cylindrical pipe or conduit, for, for example, or if the pipe is not full enough, so this is, I don't know, maybe three-fourths, or we use a square pipe or duct, or even an open channel, or something like this. How would you calculate the friction factor in this type of duct, uh, ducts? You have a square. This is common, actually. You probably know there's air and so on. How do we do it? Well, there is an approach, very interesting approach, and is to force the area of this circle in this square. So probably we want to compare how different is the area of this square, or in this case, this square compared to the circle and let's do like a like, uh, approach, mathematical approach and know how can we actually force this area to do this, okay? We got this very interesting concept which is the hydraulic radius and will help us to understand how can we force this square duct into a cylindrical duct, okay? Uh, let me give you the, def the formal definition of the hydraulic radius. I'm not going to show you right now how to force it. We're going to define the hydraulic radius. And it's essentially just the transversal flow area divided by the wet perimeter. And what does this mean? Essentially, the area of flow divided by the perimeter of flow. And as you can see, square meters divided by meters will give me meters, which is a equivalent unit of a radius. Perfect. So, I think there's no problem with the transversal area idea, but maybe the wet perimeter might sound kind of mm, diff different to understand or difficult. So, what I mean wet is what is touching, the fluid is touching in the actual duct or pipe. For example, this will be the wet perimeter. Let me give you another example. For transversal area, oh sorry, we're going to transversal area, but let me go back. The wet perimeter, I'm going to show you all these figures, what is the wet perimeter. So as you can see, the wet perimeter is always less than the actual perimeter of flow. That's the wet perimeter. And the transversal area of flow is literally the area you will see if you were to cut this and watch it from here, you're here and you watch this. What's the transversal area? This, 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 this. This is the area of flow. This right here is coming through the pipe. So once again, let me show you. The wet, perim the wet perimeter is right here, right here. Right here, actually between these two guys, the wet perimeter is the same. And that was wet perimeter. You can calculate this very easily. It's length plus this length plus this length. Or this length right here plus this length right here. And this will have three lengths. This is a little bit more tricky because it's a, let's say, three-fourths of a diameter, uh, of a circle's para uh, perimeter. So you will need to calculate the total perimeter of the circle and then multiply it by 3 fourths. Good. Now, I think there is no doubt with transversal area, but just let me picture you the transversal area in these cases. So the transversal area right here is the same. And yeah, we have the transversal area. Now let me show you how we are going to work with. It will be awesome, for example guys, remember the Reynolds number. We have density, velocity, and the diameter divided by viscosity. So it will be awesome if we can force, I already told you that we could force this square to a circle. It will be awesome if we could force a radius or a diameter or, or something equivalent like this crazy idea of the radius. So how do we do that? We're going to make it by this equation. Equivalent diameter equals four times the hydraulic radius. And recall that the hydraulic radius is just the 
transversal area divided by the wet perimeter. Okay, guys? So this way we will be able to use this diameter in the Reynolds equation. Okay? And we will be able to calculate then the friction factor. Perfect. So one thing is saying you that this is the formula for times the hydraulic radius, but imagine here, guys, I'm telling you, imagine the flow goes here, calculate the friction factor in this pipe, or calculate the friction factor in this pipe, or in this duct, or in this very strange application. I don't know why you would like to have a pipe inside this duct, but it may happen, and we're going to do some exercises in order to you to understand how to calculate number one the hydraulic radius and number two the equivalent diameter once we have the equivalent diameter of each one of them we just go directly to calculate the Reynolds number which is density there's no problem the velocity is no problem the diameter was the problem but we have an equivalent value and viscosity this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.